Live from San Francisco, California, it's The Cube at VMworld 2014. Brought to you by VMware, Cisco, EMC, HP, and Nutanix. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. Live in San Francisco, this is VMworld 2014. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Dave Vellante. Our next guest is Vikram Bambri, VP of Product Manager at EMC, Advanced Software Division. Uh, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Um, at EMC World, one of the exciting things we did uh, there was we had two cues. we had a chance to talk to a lot of folks. Um, ASD, Advanced Software Division, doing some really high-end stuff. You know, obviously EMC's new third platform, as sure. Joe Tucci talks about, very software-centric. So give us a quick update. Obviously EMC and the Federation, part of VMware family all together. What are you guys doing here? What's the software message for you guys? Uh, thank you, uh, thank you for reminding me here. So at the broadest level, if you think about it, right, uh, the story that VMware is talking about, the software-defined data center story, and Viper and the products that we built inside of uh, ASD plug very nicely into that story. And the way to think about that story is there's Viper which provides the software-defined storage layer both from a control plane perspective, but also from uh, overall uh, like you know, providing newer services like object, HDFS, block, et cetera, on commodity hardware. So which fits in very, very nicely with the overall software-defined story. And uh, specifically in context of VMware, we've actually now with uh, vCloud Air, uh, Viper Object is the underlying technology that's powering the object system in uh, vCloud Air. So that's another uh, pretty powerful one additional feather in the cap, and it's all part of the federation, so it helps the story uh, really gel well. So, wh so why the choice of uh, Viper for vCloud Air? So it's fairly, it's, I mean, it's other than the fact that you guys are part of the federation <laughs> and you know, yeah. lots of love there, but you know, there's got to be, at the end of the day, some justification from a technology solution Sure standpoint. thing, yeah. No, I think there's a, uh, at the very fundamental level, we built Viper to be the next generation of uh, cloud storage systems. So it's been written from ground up with core, core cloud principles in mind. It's been written with like no notion of downtime, uh, geo-replication, redundancy, uh, erasure encoding for lower storage footprint, et cetera. And, uh, and this is not the first time around that we are building this product. Having done this in a public cloud environment before with some of the engineers who are now working on ASD, having built Atmos before. So this is truly our third generation of the cloud storage product. So Atmos, you got uh, Azure DNA, right, yeah, as well? Uh, uh, yeah, so uh, Amitabh, uh, myself, Manavir, and a bunch of other folks who've actually come from Microsoft have built Windows Azure before. So doing this, leveraging the same learnings from that environment, doing Atmos, and now bringing all of that technology and leverage into doing a Viper a platform has been really, really helpful for we us. We just had Google on talking about Kubernetes, talking about the Docker announcement with, with VMware, and the theme that uh, he, the gentleman from Google, Craig, was resonating was really about bringing sort of the Google style of application development, in this case, sure to the enterprise, sort of right. opening that up for the world to benefit from, and obviously they'd like to you know, benefit commercially from that. Sure. We've seen a sort of half a decade or more tr long trend of the sort of hyperscale approach bleeding into the enterprise, and that's right, sort right. of what you guys are doing. So, so where are we in that transition? How fast will it occur, and, and, and how substantive is it? Is this, is this a sea change? Is this a, 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 a niche? How broad is it? It's a very interesting question, and I think fundamentally the industry is shifting towards that hyperconvergence. And you saw the announcement this mm -hmm. morning from VMware. You, there are a bunch of other uh, competitive players out there who are moving in the uh, hyperconvergence space. And I think there's going to be a mix of both uh, hyperconverged as well as two-tier architectures. But uh, uh, specifically talking about Viper, from day one when we uh, when we instantiated or uh, like you know started working on Viper. It was written from ground up with the premise that one day we actually want to enable that hyperconvergence in the platform. So if you look at, uh, like you know, uh, talking about Docker, even before Docker was uh, released as a GA product, we adopted that in our Viper in infrastructure. Uh, so we made a big bet on Docker uh, even before, like you know, Docker was out there, and it, we used that container technology to deploy Viper code on the underlying, uh, like you know, hardware infrastructure. 
And given that Docker already enables the deployment of random applications in that workload, uh, you can only see like the next leap of faith is going to be how do we uh, progress the Viper software to be able to deploy like you know compute workloads alongside mm -hmm. that as well. So you guys, you guys were discovered Docker before the big uh, mainstream. Um, a lot of folks have. We caught it early too. Jerry, obviously, Cherry Chen invested in it. Uh, Little VMware connection, yeah. VM Mafia, V Mafia. His first say. investment, right? It's, well, you know, he's, it's gonna. I, I kind of hinted to the sophomore jinx. Maybe he he's got such a good deal on his first one. How do you top that? Right? Yeah. So <laughs> maybe you on one unicorn, you're good. But what did you guys find compelling about it? And what specifically were you guys doing? Obviously, advanced software group. You guys doing some pretty cutting edge work uh, in all of our interviews. It's always been top right. shelf technologists at EMC. What did you guys? How did you identify it? How did you stumble upon it? And what did you guys do with it? So uh, again, there are a set of people in our organization who always continue to look at OpenStack and what's going on in open source technology. And uh, uh, we've been sort of following uh, Docker since its very inception. And uh, based on the simplicity and uh, the low overhead of delivering that container technology without taking on a, a, a much bigger burden uh, was like you know, we thought, okay, we'll give it a try, see if it works, and as we started to dig deeper into the implementation, as we started to look at that uh, for our specific use cases, we realized more and more that it, it was actually the model that we were looking for. Uh, VM model is absolutely good, but I think uh, uh, like you know, there's a specific set of use cases for Docker technology that that we're going to showcase as we. I move mean, forward. basically, bottom line, app guys love this. Absolutely. So, yes. So okay, app guys, it's always been the DevOps culture. Ah, the infrastructure guys. I just give me, you know, give me access. Give me faster networks. Give me more disks. I got to run my app. Right. right Pretty much, right. there's a culture shift there, right? There is. There and is. So this is a nice bridge. Absolutely, yes. Yeah, and 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 that bridge is actually simplifying the whole story of bringing that convergence together. Uh, with like, you know, now you have storage layer that can expose out uh, multiple protocols like object, HDFS, block, file over time as well, and then you tie that with the application stack on top using like, you know, the container technologies like Docker, and now in one shot you have a full conversion infrastructure running in your environments. And, and that's a wonderful story to tell, not only just from like, you know, an architecture perspective, but in actual implementation, it just works. This is the agile holy grail. I mean, if this plays out with the way people are yep, kind yep. of getting intoxicated with it today, it is standing up stuff fast, breaking it or fixing it, being agile. I mean, yep, that's yep, what yep. we're talking about, right? Yeah, so one of the big advantages of the public clouds has been around being able to take advantage of that quick dev, dev, like, you know, dev test model, being able to deploy break fix and move things around. Now we're bringing all of that into the enterprise space. So that, that's where like, you know, that there's a good sort of uh, match between the requirements that the enterprises have had for a while, but they haven't had the technology in order to enable this. So this, this brings it we all We always together. saw with the swagger of DevOps people, and you know, we always joke about Mark Zuckerberg, Dave and I are always on the queue say, you know, Mark Zuckerberg at Facebook, the poster child of DevOps, certainly Google, Amazon there too, but, sure. but you know, Mark Zuckerberg, the young, young executive billionaire. Uh, move fast, break stuff was, was, their, was their motto. Yep. And then recently they changed it in their last developer conference to move fast and be 100% reliable because they have huge load on the system. So in the spirit of phase one of innovation, you're breaking stuff, but you're innovating, right? So what's breaking in the infrastructure? The pressure that this must push on storage yep. and the infrastructure must cause a ripple effect. What do you guys see as an opportunity? When I say break stuff, I mean stuff that's not going to be broken, but like legitimately innovation. Sure. What, what's happening downstream from that? Uh, from the infrastructure and the storage perspective, the thing that's really important is uh, stuff is going to, there, you have to go in with a premise that hardware will fail, you have to go in with the premise that like, you know, things will go uh, bad in the data center. So if your software is designed from ground up to ensure that uh, it can handle failures and it can recover from failures very quickly, that, that, that's the key part. So when we built Viper again from uh, the principles were making sure that there's no single point of failure, you always sort of uh, create fault domains and things like that in the platform so that any time there is uh, uh, there, there's a failure, you are able to recover from uh, that failure very quickly and be able to move on and keep the system running up all, at, all the time. Okay, so hardware will fail, you got to have super fast recovery with as little human intervention as possible. I Absolutely. Presume. So eventually, um, the components of a rack become disposable, is that yep. right? Let's put it into the shredder? <laughs> Absolutely, yes. Right? So the, the, way we, yeah, the way we think about it, everything inside, uh, for, for Viper, we considered it as a fault domain, 
So a single disk is considered a fault domain, a node is considered a fault domain, a rack is considered a fault domain, and data center is considered the a fault domain. The building itself, right? Yeah, yeah, and anything could fail at any point. You, you have to be prepared to be able to handle that failure. And if you build that re resilience in the software layer, then in that case, like you know, the problems become a lot more simpler to handle because yeah, you can afford those hardware failures, you can afford data center failures, and still continue to like. Okay, forward. then back to my sort of one of my original questions about sort of the the, the opportunity here. Why wouldn't every data center on the planet want to run like that? So why isn't this, you know, the future? I, I think eventually it will be. It's mm. just that like you know, uh, the technology is still comparatively new. People have implemented, or, or large service providers, or ISVs have implemented in their own data centers uh, first, and now the enterprises are definitely catching up very quickly. So, uh, if I had that conversation like three years ago, people would have been like, you know, yes, I know there's cloud, but I want to uh, take my pace and think about it. Now we are having uh, a proactive conversation where the enterprises are approaching and saying, I actually want to talk about cloud first. I want to talk about this commodity infrastructure first. I, and, and yes, you can talk to me about rest of the hardware that EMC produces as well, but the first point of conversation needs to be about what's happening in OpenStack, what's happening in the commodity hardware infrastructure. How can I leverage object, HDFS, these newer data types in a much more meaningful uh, way. And, and, and the homogeneity of something like Azure based on sort of your experience or you know, of observing things like that, whether it's Google, Microsoft, Amazon, the homogeneity, homogeneity of that infrastructure allows those organizations to succeed where is it the heterogeneity of the enterprise that, that creates more complexity and, and slows down adoption? Can you talk to that? Uh, sure. Uh, from, I, I think public clouds are successful because of the fact that they're able to create that homogeneity in their infrastructure and need but it ends up presenting a certain set of challenges because it does not meet every single requirement from a, from a workload perspective. Now, when you take that, require, uh, take that back into the enterprises, enterprises, for the right reasons, have heterogeneous hardware that exists in their environments today because of the application workloads, because of uh, SLA requirements, as, uh, uh, et cetera. Uh, for, for us, it was very important to make sure that we don't take away that flexibility from from the enterprises, still give them the same features, same functionality, the better cloud economics, but not to take away that agility or that flexibility of choosing the specific hardware. So the way the Viper platform has been designed, you can uh, run uh, services on top of either traditional hardware, you can run on uh, commodity hardware that the customer brings to the bear, or you can actually buy uh, like you know ECS appliance from us. So again, the choice is in the hand of the customer and they can pick whatever platform works for them. So give us an update on the product set. So two years ago at EMC World, you guys announced with a lot of fanfare, Viper, yep. you know, the classic Jeremy Burton, right? <laughs> the product, it was enough ready to be sort of you know, introduced, but it wasn't shipping yet, and you guys shipped a little bit ahead of schedule actually. But, so where are we today? You've announced uh, Elastic Cloud Storage, you got new, uh, uh, Viper 2.0 is yep, out. Yep. Give us the update on the product. Sure. So Viper Controller has been out in the market since uh, September 2013 and we actually have a large number of enterprise and service provider customers now taking on and putting into their uh, production environments. Uh, so CSC has like 175 petabytes running uh, Viper. Uh, SAP is running a large production environment in their environment. So lots of like you know, big adoption happening in the enterprise space. Uh, Viper on the services side got uh, launched again in September 2013, but our truly commodity-based uh, storage platform got uh, launched in Viper 2.0. And that's been, uh, now we, we are working again with like, you know, service providers, enterprises, enabling private cloud for them. VCHS or vCloud Air is now uh, like, you know, a prime example of where we're leveraging the storage system inside their appliance, uh, inside their data centers. And then uh, Viper Services as an appliance, that's what Elastic Cloud Storage is, is think about it as public cloud storage in a box and that we just uh, announced uh, at EMC World and now it's in production and we are selling it to our customers. Vikram, do you have um, what I would call born in the cloud service providers or, or, or application companies using Viper? Obviously, you know, v VMware, you mentioned CSC, huge customer, yep. obviously. But how about any born in the cloud guys using it? Uh, yes, there are a few customers that are truly born in the cloud, third platform applications. I can't talk about it for, uh, uh, 
but like no, you know, there, there, are, but, yeah, but, there but are a set they, of customers who are uh, looking at like you know Viper as that commodity play, uh, enabling uh, all of the like you know uh, uh, cloud services on top of commodity hardware in their data centers or in a service provider data center. All right, we got to wrap, but uh, give us your bumper sticker on uh, VMworld uh, 2014. John and I often ask that question. <laughs> Trucks pulling away from. From your perspective, the advanced software division at EMC, what's the bumper sticker on VMworld 2014? So we actually have a very great story with uh, VMware and the uh, ASD division combined together. Viper controller and Viper services essentially give you uh, one stop, uh, like you know, both control plane management as well as a storage platform built on scratch running on top of commodity and third party hardware. And it integrates seamlessly with the uh, VMware stack. There's built-in integration with the uh, WASA provider, there's built-in integration with the uh, VC Ops, and also there's uh, for uh, orchestration and uh, uh, automation, there's also integration with VCOC. Uh, so in the end, you can have all of your complete stack running compute storage and networking in combination with Viper and uh, VMware, right? Vikram, thanks for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate it. Vikram Bombri, VP of Product Management at EMC, Advanced Software Division. Um, obviously, they are not sleeping at night, they are coding away, and they're at the software-driven enterprise. You guys are doing a great job, and, and it's great to see you guys on top of Docker. I mean, you know, people look at EMC and think, you know, spinning disk uh, company, but really a lot of software involved. Certainly, you know, Jeremy Burton is clear on that when we did the chats with him. Uh, thanks for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate it. We'll be right back, live from San Francisco, here at VMworld's theCUBE, our fifth year. We'll be right back after this short break.